Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today I'm in South Korea visiting the Jadam farm. And if you haven't uh, heard anything about Jadam yet and the ultra low cost agriculture system, it was invented by Yong Song Cho. And if you'd like to learn more, I'll put a link uh, down below to the interview video I did with him when I took a class from him while he was uh, traveling in America. Um, but right now I'm visiting South Korea because I'm visiting my wife's family. Um, so I ended up asking Yong Song if I could come and check out his farm and do some videos with him. So I'll be showing you guys a little bit around um, some of the things going on. There's not much obviously going on because it's still winter. So uh, they're going to be starting up the farm here pretty soon. So I hope you enjoy this little tour and I'm also going to do a sit down interview with him as well and ask him some more um, questions about using Jadam, some more advanced concepts behind it um, because in Jadam they make all their own nutrients and even naturally made pesticides as well. So it's a really fascinating um, system that I, I think it really has a lot of promise for the use in, in the future of agriculture and also in large scale agriculture, helping them to transition to a more uh, organic or natural way of farming. So as you can see, there's a lot of leftover peppers from last year. They grow, I think about a third of the farm is in peppers and this is a 1.2 acre plot um, all the way around. They have two greenhouses um, and then a main building where they're making uh, some of their pesticides and then also where their, uh, their irrigation system and all of that is back over here. Um, where they insert their fertilizers and their microbial inoculants. I asked them a little bit about how they're prepping their beds and you can see they use a lot of landscape fabric. Um, it rains here a lot. There is a monsoon season. So just kind of like in the south of the United States where they get so much rain, this is a way of not letting your beds get so soaking wet and also pre weed prevention and all that. A good landscape fabric will last over 10 years. And when they first set up their beds, his son Sungwoo was telling me that um, they've done a lot of different experiments doing completely no-till, you know, using some tillage, and they also have come to the conclusion that no tillage, um, you know, makes the best soil. And uh, so a lot of the time when they're making a new bed, they will uh, till it the first time, they'll add in compost, and make the bed, and then it's a permanent bed, and that's it. They never till again, and it's, um, they just use a rake to reform the beds on the, and all that, just kind of like we do in our, uh, our no-till systems. So this little building here that's sort of centered in the middle of the farm, this is a place where uh, Yongsong or anyone can live and, and work while they're here at the farm, and he said he's this year he'll be living in this. Um, so that he can just be on the farm all the time working on making YouTube videos and just you know just check out the craftsmanship in here super beautiful smells amazing in here and you know it's a fully functional uh, tiny home essentially fridge washer uh, bathroom another uh, compost toilet in here and he built this very inexpensively so up here is like a bed area there's lots of storage. There's even storage up above in the roof here. And this is a little spot for his desk and computer and all that sort of thing. He was telling me about a concept he has where, um, you know, he really wants to make the farming lifestyle really appeal to people so that they'll want to do it and try it themselves. And he talked about, you know, it would be so, such a great thing for, you know, retired people to have a place um, where they can farm and even live and just uh, you know so people can even have a backup source of income and food and you know be sustainable so you know this is another thing that he's just modeling and showing people this is a way that you could set up your life uh, trying to get more people interested in uh, natural farming and agriculture So now we're in kind of this really special space at the Jadam farm where they call it the brainstorming center and a little bit of pesticide research is done here as well. And as you can see, there's a, a large space for entertaining. So they'll cook here, they'll drink here, they, you know, the different uh, team members will come uh, talk about different ideas or they'll bring in guests maybe who are, who are coming to visit the farm or learn 
uh, from Yongsang. He really wants to make his farming really approachable and interesting, and he that's why he set up such a beautiful space like this. And what um, you're seeing behind me, these are all different types of herbs and like tinctures that they've made to experiment with, uh, to use out on the farm, and to also just uh, obviously to display it in a really beautiful way. The ones down here at the bottom, these are for making the pesticides. So this is, I think it's like sodium, sodium hydroxide, but the potassium hydroxide. Uh, this is a type of clay. This is a rock, uh, powdered rock, just like an azomite. And then this is the sulfur, so you can mix these together and, and make the Jadam, JS uh, sulfur. So uh, yeah, I just think it's really interesting the way he thinks about things and the way he thinks about getting his message out there and his style of farming. Uh, and then in here, this is the, the bathroom, but check out how cool this is. So it's a composting toilet, and I, obviously you guys can't smell, but it smells perfect in here. There's no smell at all. And they've got their carbon source. And he was telling me that he figured out that you can, um, you know, after you use the bathroom, you add in the carbon source saw sawdust. And then to completely eliminate the smell, he figured out uh, through, he said he was watching the news one day, and it was, you know, something that caught some murderer. And the, the way the murderer was getting away with hiding the bodies was he'd hide the bodies in starch to get rid of the smell. So that gave him the idea of adding starch. So he told me he adds 1% starch, and then there's completely no smell um, in his composting toilet process. So I, thought, I just thought that was pretty interesting and really sweet bathroom. All the woodwork that he has um, done in, in here and his main office is just really beautiful. Uh, this is the current irrigation system that we have. Yeah, so then one of this is JMS and one of this is for go, go Jayla. Pesticide, pesticide, uh, the pesticide? natural pesticide yeah. and uh, JMS. Yeah. Uh, by turning this mm. on, mm -hmm. it will uh, just supply all the pesticides to the each of the line, yellow line. So when we connect the stick, then you can yeah. yeah. What is your uh, so all the water goes into this big tank oh, right here? Oh, oh. And where yeah. does the water get pulled from? Is there a well or is it uh, from the city? Or? Or? Yeah, underground. Underground well. Yeah. Ah. So the reason why we collect all the water from the groundwater is uh, because we also have to mix the JMS with mm -hmm. the water. With the pump, uh, by using pump, yeah. and uh, the groundwater that comes comes out, that um, the amount is not so great. Uh, so when we pump yeah, it out, yeah, it, yeah. it's no enough power to just spread, like exactly. supply yeah. every the flow rate. Yeah, yeah, flow rate uh, is uh, low, so that's mm -hmm. why we store it here. Yep, and then, and then use the pump to mm -hmm. yeah. How many gallons or uh, liter is this? Five ton. And then how long will this last for? We finish it like within a day. So every day. Every day. Uh, not exactly every day. When it's hot, like we irrigate it. <laughs> we irrigate yeah. it and take, uh, yeah, I think tw if we irrigate twice, then the water is gone. Mm. Yeah. So this is the GLS that we all collected. And then every, again, like when we think it's kind of lack of nutrient, then we add, mm. filter it and add it to the JMS mm. container. So we, irrigate them at the same time. So you do JMS and JLF at the same time? Yeah, at the same time. How do you move it from that bin to here? Just with the bucket? Just with the bucket. Because yeah. all we need is like twice or thrice, like just yeah. two times or three times to irrigate. This is electric pump. Yeah. And this is the filter. Right. Yeah, so mm -hmm. when we put in, it filters it. And when we use the pesticide, uh, so this is the water softener. Mm -hmm. So when we collect the water for the pesticide container, it has to go through the water softener. So mm -hmm. Otherwise, it won't work. And what's um, why is the water softening so important? Why water softening so important? The reason why we are putting the uh, water softener is because the, in the groundwater there's a lot of calcium and magnesium. Yeah. So that, if we use that hard water, then the effect of the pesticide will reduce a lot and it will leave a mark on the leaves. 
So that's why we want to filter the calcium and magnesium as much as possible through this water softener and yeah, to use it as a uh, natural pesticide. So it just won't, the hard water just doesn't allow it to stick to the leaf very no. well? No, and also it leaves mark, like, mm, like white marks on damage. the leaf. So it yeah. will eventually, when you, uh, when you put too much of uh -huh. pesticide, then it will just block the photosynthesis, mm. photosynthesis of the leaves. The water softener part is not just for organic farming, but also for conventional farming. Yeah. It's also very important yeah, yeah, to yeah. use water softener. Mm -hmm. So the whole irrigation system is running off that reservoir tank and then all out to the beds. And then it's pretty cool just to see an irrigation system built in another country. Um, looks like he's got each individual bed has its own on and off. They run for their peppers, they're running two lines, and then this way they can inject their JMS, their fertilizers, all that stuff right through there. What about what should someone do if they're like on a home garden? Like how could they? Cool. That's more professional setup. Oh, we have it on the in there, in the smaller yeah, size. Okay. Smaller size. Mm -hmm. so we have a YouTube video on uh, like how to make a smaller size uh, a water softener. I haven't seen that. Okay. <laughs> it's very cheap. I'll check like, it out. Maybe fifty dollars to make one. Yeah. Okay. Because this is so simple and cheap. And is this EMT? Oh, no. No. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. We use a similar one, but it's. Tomato, I think you were in. You got better, I got you in a hundred cumin and there. Put you in the cape, or you get a little bit. Because you get some jum, 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 So the thing is, uh, with the tomato, you can fix the uh, like the rope with the like stainless steel to yeah. like, just hang it, hang it around there. But in the pepper case, um, when it grows, you have to make it wider. <laughs> but then, uh, <laughs> You have to also put a guidance line mm. because if it's too wide, then it falls, uh, falls apart when, the, when it's too much windy. Too much, yeah, too much so, yeah. weight. If you look at the people who are doing it, it's not too much. It's not too much. If you look at the style, it's not too much. 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 So when we saw people in the States who were doing farming, the structure of each crops were so complicated and uh, so after decades of like research and experiment we just uh, like we found that this is this simple structure is suitable for like cucumber and mm. uh, capsicum or many uh, many other so you use yeah. it for the tomato too yeah tomato yeah. too you yeah. go yeah. youtube also yeah we uploaded this method mm. in youtube i see yeah, i've seen the video and, um. yeah, since we don't want to uh, like um waste plastic so you're going to reuse this wire again and again. What do you do when the tomato or the cucumber gets to the top? In a greenhouse case yeah. it's a much higher ceiling yeah, they have so it can go uh, grow up continuously yeah, yeah. but in this case mm. in open field mm. we just cut the top and uh, the reason behind that is because the upper part of the tomatoes are not so good quality, so we just cut it off and let, let focus on the, the, lower. the lower part so that nutrient will continue to go to the tomato uh, fruit. And then do you plant like another succession? Uh, we can also do that, but we also plant, uh, no, we plant tomatoes on during the May, like all of them. Okay. Not in the same yeah, yeah, time. Yeah. One time. Yeah, you know, one uh, time. That's what I do too. Yeah. How do you form the beds? Uh, with the just with the sickle. Uh, not the sickle, rake? like a rack, yeah. Yeah, just rake it up and then go. Uh, first, when we do it, we use the machine, mm. but small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah small like a small tiller. Machine. Yeah, tiller to make uh, make the ridge. Right. Then after that, with the rack, we and just no tile it up, yeah. yeah. And around. Do you ever add compost out here or no? It's yeah. Only, yeah. Yeah, that's the compost. Yeah, the, the bags, yellow bags yeah. are the compost. When do you add compost? Like once a year or do you just, or once? Once a year. Once a year in the beginning. Before, before, transplant, uh, before transplanting. Yeah. Yeah, the black thing on, uh, that you see on, the, on there, uh -huh. that's the compost. It all uh -huh. decompose with the microorganisms, mm -hmm. like without tilling. Why do you also do compost in addition to like JMS and JLF? Isn't the JMS providing the so microbes? Ah, uh, you cannot actually farm just with the microorganisms. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. compost mm -hmm. to You have to have a compost mm -hmm. to have a per uh, like an oh. optimal uh, nutrient. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, microbial solution is helpful, but it does not allow, uh, like, it does not help to crop, uh, helps the crop to grow uh, bigger, higher. Mm. But what about with the JLF? Does that? Uh, like... 음식물 액비는. 어 그것도 도움이 되는데 어 농사를 좀 수확량을 많이 늘리려면 그저 베이스 포틀라이저를 갖다 충분히 거죠. So um, yeah, we use that sometimes. Like as I told you right there, like um we use that sometimes. Like when we see something slack, but mm. uh, before uh, I mean, before farming, we need to make at least a perfect base fertilizer, yeah. so that it will be good start again. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And later on, when we think it's a lack of nutrient that we add JLF. Right. So like on peppers or cucumbers, you're growing a long time, mm-hmm. and then you know they're kind of using up the nutrients in the soil. Then you feed them more, yeah. and boost them with that. You don't come in and add more compost. Yeah. We'll, okay. we, we always check. Whether that uh, it seems needed or uh, needing mm-hmm. or not, then mm-hmm. we add it or decide not to add it. Yeah. So it's uh, obviously raining today, so it's been a little bit tricky to get some footage. I won't be able to show you guys as much as I totally want, but I hope you will enjoy the interview with him. So be sure to watch that next.